Now, I don't want you to worry, but you might have been approaching sharpening your photos the wrong way. I want to talk about that right now. But before I do, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Brian. I'm a photographer who helps other photographers like you improve the look of your photos using apps like Lightroom and Photoshop and other third party apps like one that we're going to use in this video. And again, you might already know this, but this is something that took me a while to understand when it comes to sharpening photos. There are two types of sharpening when you think about it. The first is the most common one, like for example, when you use the sharpening sliders in Adobe Lightroom, for example. And that is when you wanna add detail to a photo. You wanna make it a little crispier, make it a little bit punchier, but that is one type of sharpening. The other, and I think a lot of people think that the Lightroom sharpening would be used for this other type of method, and that is when you have an out of focus photo. I'm not saying fully blurred out, but where you just miss focus of the eyes, for example, and the image is just a little soft in those key areas. You don't necessarily want to use Lightroom sharpening for that. Instead, what I recommend is trying a different type of sharpening that is purpose built for fixing those kinds of issues. And in this case here, I'm talking about Topaz Photo AI and its model for fixing out of focus or blurry photos. And I'm gonna show you the difference right now. All right, so here we are in Lightroom and you can see I've got three cute photos here of animals. And this will give me the opportunity to explain to you the differences between the two types of sharpening I was talking about. The first is probably the most common and that is where you have a photo that's good to go. You've edited it and it's sharp. It's already sharp, meaning everything's in focus. You know, the hairs and the eyes and the mouth and the snout, they're all good. Everything is good. The little claws are cute and sharp, but you want to add a little bit extra pop, a little bit extra detail. And that's where most people go to the sharpening module here under the detail panel um, in the develop module here, you'll see these four sliders. And I'll show you how to quickly do this, how, how I use it at, at the very least. And if you've watched any of my editing videos, you already know this. The way that I use um, sharpening is, first thing I do is I'll zoom into the most important part of the image, the image that, the part of the image where I definitely want there to be uh, good detail. and. You don't have to be super close um, zoomed in wise, but just so that you can see everything. So the way that I like to do this is I will go and start with the amount slider and on a Mac, I'm gonna press and hold the option key while dragging. On Windows, you're gonna press and hold the alt key and watch what happens. See how the image turns into a grayscale image? The reason why this happens is it's easier to see sharpening, the effect of Lightroom sharpening when it's a grayscale image. And you can see if I just go all the way out, you see how it's getting a little over sharpened? That's not the point of this video, although that is important. Do not over sharpen your image. Basically bring it to until you start to see nice details along the edges. Now, I wanna talk really quickly about the two sliders here that often get overlooked. Usually people talk about a mount and then go straight to masking, if that. But these are important sliders when you're using Lightroom for sharpening. The radius slider controls basically the thickness of the edge where you sharpen. And this is also a great way to illustrate that by using the option or alt key. So watch what I mean by the thickness of the edge. I'm pressing the option key, again, alt key on Windows, and you get this kind of, uh, almost like an inverted mask view. Now watch what happens when I bring the radius all the way to the right. You see how those edges, each of the edges of uh, the animal here, they're getting thicker. You see that, that kind of black band? Um, you really don't need that very often. In fact, I highly, recommend not doing that. In fact, I would just usually just use the default 1.0 for radius, or you can bring it down a little bit if it starts to look a little bit over sharpened. Then below that, you see the detail slider and that slider controls the amount of sharpness based on the kind of the size of the edge. So a lower detail slider value will apply sharpening to larger edges whereas the higher values will apply to smaller edges. And again, if you press and hold the option key or alt key, you can see how as I increase that detail slider, the edges get a little crispier because it's applying sharpening to those smaller edges. You don't need that either. In fact, that's an easy way to over sharpen. So again, if you double click on any of these sliders here, it'll revert it back to the default setting. So I find that that's fine. The final thing that uh, I do for sharpening in Lightroom is I take the masking slider here. I only want sharpening applied to the edges. I want, I don't want Lightroom applying sharpening to the out of focus bokeh area or this foreground area here. 
With the masking slider, again, press and hold the option key. And then what I wanna do is bring the slider until only the edges, like almost like a rough sketch of the subject appears. And that's where the sharpening will be applied. And so that is how I use sharpening in Lightroom. You can zoom in here and you know toggle that effect on and off. Look around here mostly uh, along these high contrast edges, they get just a nice little bit of bite there. And that that's great. Another place where you can apply sharpening with Lightroom is on export. So if you go to the export window, you'll see that there is an output sharpening section here. And if you enable it, you can control um, how much additional sharpening will be applied based on the intent. So in this case, screen is if you're just exporting it as a file to share it um, with someone else or sharing it online, or if you're gonna print, and then you also have uh, an amount. And usually if you do apply it for screen, standard is fine. Uh, so that's the other uh, way to apply sharpening, but you have no controls there. And so again, that is how most people, including myself, use Lightroom uh, to apply sharpening. The image is already good. I just wanna add a little bit extra detail to those edges just to make it pop. But that is not the way that you should use sharpening if, for example, your image is out of focus. There's an area of the image that is just soft. I would not recommend using these sharpening sliders to fix that, and I'm gonna show you why right now. All right, so here we have a photo of a cat. And if we zoom in, you can see, aside from the fact that the image is quite noisy, um, the eyes are out of focus. They're just soft. It's possible that the point of focus the camera uh, got was the snout and the whiskers of the cat, but the eyes are just out of focus. And so you could try to use Lightroom's noise reduction. I've done another video that I'll share at the end of this one it's just not good. Like, I mean, the, the, I'm bringing both the color and luminance noise reduction sliders pretty much to um, the max here and all that noise is still there. So I don't recommend necessarily using Lightroom for noise reduction, but with sharpening, the problem here is that we're also sharpening the noise. Um, so in this situation here, if you want to sharpen an image that's noisy, you want to use uh, something that can handle both noise and sharpening. And that is where I want to talk about this app called Topaz Photo AI by Topaz Labs. And rather than talk about it, I'll show you. The easiest way to get to it from Lightroom is to right click, go to edit in, and then go to Topaz Photo AI. I'm just going to go with these default values of a TIFF and then click edit. All right, so in Topaz Photo AI, you can see the autopilot feature here that automatically identifies issues with the photo and then provides recommendations. It found that there is high image noise and it's also sharpening the soft subject. So if you hover over the word subject here or over here, uh, Topaz Photo AI will automatically apply a mask to it. And that mask is only for sharpening, just so you know. The sh it has nothing to do with noise reduction. Noise reduction will be applied globally but this will be for where sharpening is applied. So let's go ahead and let's zoom in. Uh, let's start with 200%. And so you can see here that um, once it finishes processing, first of all, the noise is gone. Uh, and that's great. You can see that there's it's nice and clean and it does a decent job with sharpening, but the eyes are not exactly fully sharp. So let's go ahead. I'm going to zoom in even more here. So we specifically get the eyes and then I'm going to expand on the sharpen module here and I'm going to bring the strength up until I start to see more detail. I'm also going to increase clarity. And now we start to have some nice detail in the eyes. Again, watch, take a look at this eye here specifically since it's in the foreground. I'm going to return it back to the autopilot recommended settings. And you can see how it doesn't look quite as sharp. So in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and increase, like I said, until it looks sharp. And then I'll zoom out to 200%. And that actually looks really good. The other thing I'm gonna do now is zoom to fit so I can see the entire image. And the reason why I wanna do that is because I, I really just wanna see if the sharpening is doing anything funky with the rest of the image. So the way that I do that is if you press and hold on the image, you'll see an original. And then when you let go, you'll see the processed version. And I tend to press and hold, or press and release rather, pretty quickly, because that, makes it easier for me to see if there are any major issues. And to me, there aren't. So this looks great, uh, especially compared to the original. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, click on save to Adobe Lightroom Classic to return that TIFF file back. 
Now, if we go to the grid view, this is the original. This is the processed version using Topaz Photo AI. I mean, it's, I mean, it's game over in my opinion. Compared to the source, again, you always have to validate against the source. The source is a mess. It's super noisy. The, the eyes are kind of soft. Um, here, all that noise is gone and we have really nice detail. Now, you could say, all right, well, what happens if you take this image here and we try, let's not even bother with the noise reduction, let's just try to sharpen. Um, so again, option, click, and drag, uh, and then let's take the masking so that really only the edge of the eyes are showing. And you can already tell, I mean, it's just between the two, it's no contest. So that's a, an example of, again, where you are using sharpening, technically it's sharpening, but it is not sharpening to kind of add detail to the edges of your photo. This is sharpening to actually fix an issue with focus. And that's, they're like monumentally different issues. And each one has its own very specific way to fix it. So let's show you one more example here. And this is a much more subtle one. Again, another cat, and you can see that the eye that's closest to the camera is slightly out of focus. I'm not worried about this eye here, um, but I, this is, I wanna use this example because I wanna illustrate to you the lengths that I'll go to make sure that the image is properly sharp. In this case here, all I care about is the eye. Everything else about the cat looks great. I'm happy with it. I don't need to sharpen anything. So I'm gonna send this photo to Topaz Photo AI just to sharpen this little bit here. And so again, I'm gonna right click, go to edit in Topaz Photo AI and then click edit. All right, so we're back in Topaz Photo AI. And you remember in the previous image, I said that I'll often, um, when I'm zoomed to fit, I'll press and hold to see the original um, and let go to see what the effect of the sharpening is. And this is in a situation where sometimes Topaz Photo AI's sharpening AI model kind of fails, falls apart. Look like over here, when I press and hold, you see how it's attempting to sharpen those areas. Also, let's zoom in a little bit also kind of, it looks good from here, the, the edge of the fur. Actually, it looks really good. I might keep that. But when I was zooming to fit, I hope you can see it through um, through the, the YouTube compression. But when I press and hold, you see how it just looks really messy? So I'm not sure yet if I'm going to keep that. But what I care most about is the eye. So this is how I will approach the eye. Um, I'll zoom in and... Actually, no, what I'm gonna do first is let me zoom to fit. And if you hover over subject, you can see that the entire cat is selected and, and Topaz Photo AI automatically selected it, which is really impressive. But I don't want that. I just want the eye selected in this case. So I'm gonna press on this refine button. And then these are the um, salient object presets that are used to identify a subject and auto mask it. I'm gonna click on none because I don't want anything to be auto-selected. And then I'm also going to go to the brush here. I'm gonna disable AI brush. AI brush essentially cuts up the image into segments. So it kind of makes masking somewhat easier. Um, and you could see here, if you click on it and then drag up, in this case, it actually works well. If I subtract it, I'll show you the difference when we disable um, AI brush. Now you have just a traditional brush. So if I you know, draw here, it's not doing any detection. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna really quickly remove that. It's just a traditional brush that you're pretty familiar with. So now with a regular brush, I'll just adjust the brush size and I'm going to uh, draw the eye. The AI brush actually worked well in, in the case here. I've had experiences where the AI brush is just, it's too cumbersome um, to use. So I just use a regular brush and uh, I'm gonna click done. That's gonna create a new mask where only the eye is selected, you see? Not the whole cat. And if we zoom in, you can see that when we press and hold to see the original, the eye looks sharper. I'm gonna expand sharpen here, and I'm gonna increase the strength. Um, I want it to be a little stronger here, just to make sure that those details pop. All right, that looks really good. I'm happy with that. And again, pretty much only the eye is um, selected. Now that you're zoomed in, you can also click on refine to clean up this mask. So if you wanna just really just shave it off over here, you can, and then click done to commit that new mask. 
And again, if we zoom out to fit, it's a small detail, but the eye just looks cleaner. I'm not gonna bother sharpening the, uh, the rest of the cat's head because I think the eye is just perfect here. And that's the only reason why I would send the photo to Topaz Photo AI is to just sharpen the eye. And again, it's a completely different sharpening. And I'm gonna to illustrate to the, that to you right now. I'm gonna first click on Save to Adobe Lightroom Classic to return it back. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let's first just compare really quickly. Because you have to really see the before and the after. So like here's the original and here's the after. And, and it you can see how much of a difference sharpening makes. But again, what I was talking about is let's say we take this image and we use Lightroom sharpening. Again, what we're using now is Lightroom sharpening to try to fix an out of focus area. So I'm gonna again, press and hold the option key until the eye looks sharp right around there. I'm gonna adjust masking and then I'm gonna compare the two. So let's compare the Lightroom sharpening versus the Topaz Photo AI. And again, no contest. Look how much cleaner the sharpening is here. This isn't even very sharp and it's got these weird, it almost looks like the cat has cataracts. Um, so it just looks a lot better um, when you're using Topaz Photo AI to fix uh, an out of focus issue using sharpening. All right, so I hope I successfully illustrated to you how there are two different types of sharpening. There's sharpening that Lightroom is really good at when you wanna add detail to edges to an already sharp photo. And then there is sharpening using AI models, for example, the ones in Topaz Photo AI, to fix issues with focus. For example, a lens blur or a motion blur or just an out of focus part of an image. That's where Topaz Photo AI really shines. And if you don't have Topaz Photo AI, I'd love it if you click on the link below. It is an affiliate link, so I will earn a small commission if you make a purchase. I wanna thank you for that because that helps support my small business and allows me to continue to create these kinds of videos for you. Before you go, be sure to click on this video too. This is another video where I show how to use Topaz Photo AI to apply amazing noise reduction to raw files. Check that out. And if you're not subscribed, I'd love it if you click on subscribe and that bell icon. I'll see you on the next video.